What's up everybody and welcome back to a slightly different viewpoint than usual. Typically uh, when I do this podcast, I'm sitting at the other desk. Um, but this week I was in New York City and we did some recording up there and I had some microphones and I took some microphones and I left some microphones up there. And the microphone that I typically use for the, the other desk is in New York. I have ordered another one. It was supposed to arrive yesterday, but thanks to the magics of Amazon and UPS, they did not coordinate correctly, and my package is delayed and will arrive sometime this weekend, which means I should be back to normal stuff next week. But uh, there was a lot going on and a significant number of questions this week, if I could get this open. But before we do that, we're going to dive into the big news of the week. Obviously, Apple had a big event. Not going to dive too deep into that, but just a couple quick thoughts. Apple Arcade, which is a really interesting approach to what Apple is trying to do in mobile gaming. It sounds kind of some familiar, right? They're gonna bundle some things up for what we believe is gonna be a monthly price, and then you'll be able to do a bunch of casual gaming. I think this is going to probably impact most likely Nintendo the most, um, but we'll see. We, we don't know enough about it. We don't know the pricing. We just know that it's launching this fall and we will learn more. Um, Apple News, obviously they announced that as well, which is a bundle of services and magazines and all that good stuff. Um, it's whatever. And then Apple credit card is probably the most interesting if you want, but it's also the least interesting because there's nothing really new here. It's just a credit card that ties back into the wallet and it tracks all your expenses, which is nice, but the features of the credit card are pretty similar to everything else. The one nice thing you can do is dynamically create uh, credit card numbers, which means if you're buying something online, you can create a number and then have it process and then not have to worry about your identity being stolen, which seems to be happening all the time. It was actually announced today that Toyota announced that they were breached a couple times and uh, millions of people owning Toyotas and Lexus. Lexus this is Lexi, whatever, um, data was, you know, compromised. So all that good stuff. And then there's also Apple TV, which again is coming this fall, but we don't know a lot about it, unfortunately, because they just had Oprah and some other large people up on stage saying, Hey, this is coming. And then you'll be able to get things through the Apple TV app, but it looks like you're going to show Hulu, but then you can't stream Hulu through it. So we will find out. And again, pricing isn't quite known yet. So it's a bunch of odd Apple announcements of things you can't get yet, except for some of the, the new stuff. Um, it's just a bunch of things that are coming, which is unlike Apple, which is typically saying, hey, here's a product, it's announced and ready to go. Anyways, so moving on, uh, Microsoft Edge, which is the uh, Chromium version of Edge leaked this week. I've been using it actually exclusively ever since it leaked. And I gotta tell you guys, it's pretty good. If you like Chrome, um, you're going to like Edgium or whatever you want to call it. it. It's basically the same thing. The extensions work. Just about every single thing works. Um, they are missing some features from the old Edge, such as good and rich PDF support. But um, hopefully we will learn more about this, their plans here. But a couple builds have leaked. It's all digitally signed by Microsoft. I don't recommend installing it maybe on a production machine because, again, you're downloading random bits from the Internet. But I've been using it. It works great. Um, I could honestly see myself dropping Chrome, like, but even though you're still kind of using Chrome, it's just Chrome, but Microsoft-fied, if you want. Um, Microsoft also took control of 99 websites this week, and they've got, they took control of 99 problems for the Iranian hackers. Uh, they, Microsoft said that these websites were being used to attack and uh, use, being used by nation states, essentially, to attack different services, and Microsoft took control of them. Microsoft also announced a Surface Hub event for April 17th back in New York City. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go just because I, well, I was just in New York City and then like two weeks after that, I got to go to Seattle for build, the Build Conference, Microsoft's Build Conference. And then following that, I got to go to Miami. And then following that, I got to go to Washington, DC. So a quick trip to New York may not happen, but we'll see. I haven't fully decided either way. Uh, and then Windows 10 spring release is just about nearly complete. Microsoft, I believe, has selected a build. If they haven't, they're going to be very soon here. And so that should be ready to go. Um, if that's your thing, there's still some odd things around gaming. So be careful installing this on day one where it's blocking some, uh, the anti-cheat stuff is, is causing some headaches. Some people are saying it's fixed. Others are saying that, no, they're still having a problem. So, uh, keep going on with that on the gaming side of life. Uh, Nintendo is supposedly working on two new versions of the switch. I gotta tell you, I'm very tempted by the switch just because that's the only way you can play the Mario and all those other good games. And um, I, I'm tempted by it, but they're supposedly working on two new versions, a higher end and a lower end skew. And so if you're on the verge of buying a Switch, you might want to be wait, wait for that stuff. And then on the Xbox side, we've got a bunch of new stuff for games with gold. We've got Technomancer, Outcast, Second Cast, Star Wars 
Battlefront and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon all coming to that platform with the games with gold, all that good stuff as usual. But um, I kind of blew through the news because it was an interesting news week. But we have a ton of questions which, this week, which is always my favorite part. And so that is what we're going to dive into. But uh, before we do that, I want to give a heads up that next week I've, I've, I wrote up a massive post. It's about 3,300 words or so where I took every single company. I took Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo and kind of gave them, broke them out by their services, trying to align to see where each player falls as we head into what I consider the next generation of gaming wars, right? We've got streaming, we've got console wars, we've got Apple in there, we've got Amazon, we've got all this good stuff. And so I finally wrote down all these thoughts and put them into a massive post, which I will link to in the description below. It may not be exactly when this thing goes live, but definitely check that out. And then next week, I'm going to do a, a single video on each company. So there's going to be a lot of content coming out next week on that. All right, let's dive into the questions. Bart asks, he says, now that Apple is going cross-platform with its TV apps, do you expect Microsoft will follow suit and bring movies and TVs to Roku, Samsung TVs, and the likes? There was rumors that they were going to be doing this for a while, and actually some evidence showed up, but Microsoft has taken their sweet time. I honestly think that Microsoft is probably just bowing out of this space. It doesn't seem like they are trying very hard to grab any market share or mind share with their product and service in that area. So could it happen? Absolutely. I have not heard anything explicitly saying that it is happening. And the second question says, I saw your tweet earlier this week that UWP might be on the chopping block. Will PWB be the only option from here on out with Edgium coming? So this is a, a, an interesting question because there was a lot of back and forth on this. What happened was Xamarin, which is a, a company that Microsoft bought that specialized in UWP, PWAs, mobile iOS development, um, removed some UWP functionality from some of its products. Not the whole thing, just one specific aspect. And people were kind of freaking out out because hey you microsoft made a big deal about uwp my gut is says that microsoft will not admit that uwp is going away they, they can't they put too much into it they're too far down the rabbit hole um, but what i expect is that the focus and priority probably shifts away from uwp being an, a be-all end-all solution and that they begin to well they've already loosened the nuts and bolts about what actually is a uwp i mean they're letting these apps into the store and all this stuff that aren't true to uwps so my gut tells me that they're going to continue to support uwp but it's just not going to be the only priority i still think that microsoft's best bet is to support PWAs all in and we had, we do see some good first party uh, support coming with the Edgium browser so that is kind of my, my gut there uh, Mad Thina says as we get to the home stretch of 1903 development which is the Windows 10 build that will be released this spring what are your feeling towards the quality of Windows development process do you think it is better than before or just more of the same I honestly think it's just more of the same is rough as that is, I don't think, I haven't seen any tangible evidence that shows that Microsoft has taken an additional steps to verify the quality of the builds that are going out. We haven't, we haven't explicitly seen any of that. Now, could things happen behind the scenes? Sure. And I guarantee you, Microsoft will tell us that things have happened behind the scenes, but the proof will be in the pudding when these builds start actually shipping one on time with no major bugs. But we have, we have this anti-cheat issue going on currently, which could be a big hairy hang up for some people. So uh, my, me personally, I'm not going to be installing day one. I'm going to let this one ride out a little bit because I've been burned by the last update. Um, and so, we, well, everybody got burned a little bit. Some people even lost his data. So I would be cautious to install it on day one and just wait and see how things roll out. Redstar92 says, hey, Brad, any updates on Microsoft 365 for consumer? Will it include Xbox-related stuff or PC Game Pass type offerings? So if you're not familiar with Microsoft 365, this is something Mary Jo wrote up uh, a couple months ago, I believe. And the idea here is that Microsoft... The company has Microsoft 365 for the business, which is a bundle of Office 365, Windows, and a couple other services. And the idea is that, hey, they're going to bring a consumer offering out at some point. I, I think there is some merit to this because if you think about it, somebody like myself, uh, I pay for Office 365. I have a home uh, subscription. I also have Xbox Live Gold. Those are two services that I'm paying for. Now, if Microsoft could bundle them together so that I could just pay one fee for both products, I would be about that. Um, you could also see them tossing in additional OneDrive storage, uh, Skype credits, and possibly Game Pass, and some other things to create a consumer bundle of the service. That would not surprise me. I haven't heard about when this is coming out, but I have heard that they are obviously considering this because they have enough consumer services that not everybody explicitly thinks 
like would be bundled together. But I mean, if you have an Xbox and you pay for Microsoft and you pay for Office, it'd be great if they would bundle those two together to give you gold and Office 365 at a lower price. So we will see. Uh, oh God, Palugatha says, uh, do you think Microsoft is changing the user interface a little too much with the redesign of Edge and Windows Lite using rounded quarters, drop shadows, and acrylic everywhere? It's very reminiscent of Windows 7, and that doesn't seem like a good thing. I think the soft highlighted border will make a better drop shadow. I don't know if this is a shared opinion. I'm curious what other users think. So I will tell you this. I know that the Edgium browser that has leaked, that is not the final UI element. Um, that is just where it's at today. So expect to see the visual style of that browser change before it is released by the end of the year. So just keep that in mind because candidly, when you open it up, it's most people are going to say, hey, this looks like Chrome, but Microsoft, Microsoft off, Microsoft softified, whatever, whatever you want to say that. There's not a lot of, there's not really a lot. There's not really any fluent design. And so Microsoft has done a pretty poor job, honestly, at the company of bringing fluent across everything. Granted, this is beta one, maybe even alpha one of Edgium. And so I expect to see further design elements to be implemented as we get closer to release. But I would not get hung up in the design element of the browser at this, at this time. Uh, Kadupa says, this is a bit of a weird question. How much of a problem is Google's Chrome OS and Chromebooks will be for Microsoft workforce in the future? So this is a, a very real concern because a lot of people grow up with a product and then they just want to transition into, the, into, the, into their life uh, with that product. And so when kids are growing up with Chromebooks and Google Slides and Google Docs, transitioning them into the corporate world that's not using that is going to be a challenge now you could just say well they will adapt and which is perfectly fine and they probably will for a while but at some point those kids that are using chromebooks right now will be the ceos of those companies we already see this kind of in the slack generation of startups where they use slack and google docs um, my personal opinion here is that it's going to take a while if this manifests in any real sense in the enterprise world because again until somebody um, finds a way to supplant Excel, which runs a lot of finance shops, it's going to be hard to rid the world of Office, well, specifically Excel. This is why we see Microsoft putting so much effort into Teams lately, because they're trying to create the next generation collaboration hub, which is Teams. And so it's going to be challenging at some point, but it's not quite yet. Microsoft is obviously concerned about this. This is why they're creating Windows Lite. If they didn't care about that segment, they'd be like, ah, whatever, they'll just use it. But they know that users growing up with a product will continue to want to use that product. It's not fully, it's much bigger of a threat, I believe in the US than say abroad. Uh, at the university level, I still believe that Office is still the king and Windows and Macs are still big issues. But you could also apply the same thing to look, Macs have been around for a while and they still haven't taken over the enterprise world. While it will be hard for Microsoft to say, hey, just switch and all that stuff, it's worth pointing out that Microsoft has by far the best control and management systems for the enterprise compared to any platform anywhere else. And that will remain supreme. And as long as Microsoft remains in control of that destiny of things like as of Active Directory or identity, uh, identity control, I guess is a more general way to put it. It's going to be hard to knock Microsoft out of that perch, not to mention they're also building out security and everything else. So yes, while a user might be more familiar with Google Docs, when they get into a place where security matters, Microsoft is trying to position Office 365 Windows and that entire suite under that uh, advanced threat protection umbrella to make it harder to switch away than just saying, hey, I just want to use Google Docs. Uh, Greg Edwards says, on an episode of What the Tech towards the end of 2018, Paul and Andrew briefly discussed Microsoft's brands that bring two new 4K webcams to market. One being, yeah, all this good stuff. Any updates on when these might be headed to the consumers? I don't know. I just know that they do exist. I believe one is called uh, Barty, or I, I wrote up the code name somewhere. It's like a Ruba camera and a Barty camera or something along those lines. I do know that they do exist. I unfortunately do not have a ship date for when these things will come out. I just know that they are actual products. They've been, uh, they're in manufacturing, they're being tested and sampled, but getting release dates is hard to uh, lock down. Uh, will says, well, the upcoming Microsoft and Steelcase event in April, could we see some updated hardware or other items as well? Uh, maybe we'll see the updated Surface Book 2 that was talked about earlier this year with updated processors. Uh, I haven't heard anything else. The thing that's worth pointing out that this is actually being held at the Steelcase offices, not at a just a generic keynote venue. 
Uh, we, we know that it's going to be a corporate event. That's the, that's the case here. Even the invites that Microsoft sent out were much more uh, muted than in the past, I should say. And so it's just kind of like, hey, we're going to come show off the Surface Hub 2S. I don't believe we're going to see the 2X, by the way. The 2X is the fancy folding one. We're just going to see the 2S at that event, which is going to have updated hardware, the specs, and all that good stuff. I don't think that this is going to be some big flashy reveal. I could absolutely be wrong. I haven't fully been able to uncover everything that's going to be announced yet. Um, it's easier said than done. But it wouldn't it surprise me if they did that because the Surface Book 2 is showing a little bit age in terms of chips, but I also know that they're working on a redesign of it. And so Microsoft isn't one to rush things out like that. So Cloud Princess says, at the moment, anything using UWP style rendering has a max frame rate limit of 100 frames per second. Having a monitor at any higher refresh rate causes the frame rate limit to be set even lower at half that, for example. Um, it applies, da 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 da. Uh, do you know if Edge 75 has this bug or well as well, or will it mean that Edge may finally support higher refresh rate displays? Interesting. My gut would tell me that if it works on Chrome, then with Edgium, it's going to support that higher frame rate. I don't know explicitly. Uh, he says this bug does not apply to Chromium. However, Google Chrome has a 144 frames per hertz on a 144 hertz display. Let me put it this way. If it works on Chrome, it's going to work on Edgium because Edgium is just, just a layer of a uh, little bit of functionality right now on top of the same rendering engine. So it should work just the same as Chrome does. Will R says, hi, Brad, Microsoft is redoing all of their icons, but I haven't seen a new Bing icon anywhere. Are they not going to update it or refresh the Bing icon? They haven't done much with Bing lately, to be honest. They used to make these huge updates about design and all that good stuff. And lately it's just been kind of quiet. I don't quite know. Um, it would be surprising if they didn't do Bing, but Bing has just been kind of sitting on the back corner. I don't, I don't think they're getting rid of Bing by any means. I mean, it's a pretty integral part of a lot of what Microsoft does, or at least it was at one point. It used to be the fabric that tied everything together. Now it's the APIs and graphs at all that they have. So uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really, I just don't know if they're going to update that icon or not. BDSRF says, Brad, do you know why they didn't put a 120 hertz display in the Surface Studio 2? The Surface Hub is 120 hertz. Um, great question. My answer tell my I don't know explicitly why they did not, but my gut tells me all they did was they did a, just a chip refresh in the device. They didn't really change too much. I bet that would be what we see in the next generation. I know they did update the display some with some of the brightness and a few other things, but I bet that they're holding that back for the next generation. Um, Surface Studio 2 was more iterative updates rather than sort of like an overhaul. And so I bet that we see that potentially on the next one, because you're right, the Surface Hubs do have a much better display, and they obviously have the technology. Felipe says, Brad, do you think Microsoft will open Windows Core OS to more stores than just as they announced for HoloLens 2? This is one of the great big questions we don't know yet. Because Microsoft is allowing multiple stores on HoloLens 2, it raises the question, will we see multiple stores with Windows or with anything else? I kind of hope so. Just because it, more competition is good, but it can also get kind of convoluted as well. So we don't know yet, but Microsoft has set the precedence that they're not against the idea. Part of me wants to see it happens just to kind of see what would happen. Uh, the Joe Finn says, two questions. VS Code is an Electron app. He's absolutely right. Is Microsoft thinking about bringing a VS Code editing experience fully on the web, like within GitHub or Azure repos? I have heard that they are trying to figure out how to do this. Now, I don't know when or if or what it will do. Uh, build would be an interesting time for them to announce it, but they, they have all the pieces, as Joe is pointing out, to make this possible. So will it happen? I hope so, and I bet it does. I don't know when, though. And then WebAssembly seems to be pretty incredible these days, but no big companies are really pushing it. Any idea how Microsoft feels about WebAssembly? Could there be an Electron Plus WebAssembly for legacy apps? I don't know. I, I candidly have not heard anything yet about uh, WebAssembly out of the Microsoft camp. They've got a lot going on right now, but that's not to say it's not happening. Mr. PKI asks, he says, why do you think that Microsoft is not responding to inquiries on why they're uh, offering up phone calls with Microsoft engineers in the feedback hub in Windows 10 when that is one of the largest scams affecting home users? So taking a step back here, there, there's a scam out there where you'll get a call from Microsoft and they will tell you something dumb and you have a virus or whatever. And then they'll basically walk you through some steps that allow them to take over your machine, steal your money, lock up your stuff and all that good stuff. 
basically, if Microsoft ever calls you, you should hang up because that doesn't happen. And then Microsoft has this bright idea to say, hey, why don't they call us and we'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations using our feedback hub. Microsoft has been completely quiet on this. I suspect that somebody is getting their hand slapped pretty hard for this because this is not smart. Basically, what they're doing is saying, if you have feedback, put it in the feedback hub. But if you really have feedback, why don't you give us a call? Because um, then we'll actually listen to it and not have it get lost in the noise rather than, um, yeah. So if, I, this was one of the more baffling things that I've seen Microsoft do because it plays right into the hands of the scammers who are trying to steal your money. So uh, Rob, Rob T. Boy says, my Surface Pro 4 with a Mo M3 processor is starting to get long in the tooth. Any rumors on the Snapdragon 8CX? Are there rumors of a Surface model with an ARM processor, preferably not a Surface Go? I have heard that there is a Surface device running, an eight, running a Snapdragon chip. We don't know when it is coming out, unfortunately. I believe it's... Centaurus might be running it. Don't quote me on that. They, Microsoft's been making some decisions in the past couple of weeks, so I don't quite know which direction they have gone. But um, Snapdragon and Qualcomm didn't come out with an 8CX chip for it to just sit on a shelf unused. Let's just put it that way. So Felipe I asks again, he says, what do you think will happen to PC games on the Epic Store and Steam if Microsoft drops support for Win32 apps eventually on Windows Core OS? Microsoft will have a solution um, to bring all that content forward. They're not just going to cold turkey the whole situation. I, I, I can promise you that, at least not in the enterprise queue, because that would be a serious problem. And so uh, not to mention Windows Core OS is not going to be the be all end all OS right away. If you're going to want to run games, you're probably not going to be running Windows Core OS, which is also what we kind of refer to as Windows Lite. Uh, Windows Lite sits up here. Windows Core OS is like the underlying structure. You'll still have Windows 10 if you're going to be a gamer for a while, I believe. And then Sly, Slyby Bop says, Hi Brad, with a rumor of a streaming box utilizing a mix of local hardware and cloud tech for a low price, do you think Microsoft will enable Xbox One hardware to use mixed cloud local cloud tech for streaming? I, I absolutely do. Also, do you believe we'll, we'll see Elastic Compute similar to what Stadia announced for xCloud? Because I don't get how Xbox One hardware is supposed to run next-gen next games. So next-gen games on current hardware could just be a partial streaming thing. Right. If if you can run a next gen game in your browser, there's nothing that could stop you from running it on an Xbox one. Now, what I have heard is that Microsoft is working on a technology that allows it to split games. And so they can take certain portions of the game, put it local hardware and then stream some of the art assets from the cloud. The idea being that imagine you are moving around. Um, imagine if a figure in a 3D environment. There's no there's no textures. There's no bad guys. There's nothing else but you could be that person moving around in the environment and then everything else is streamed down locally because that reduces a lot of the latency because it's not trying to figure out where you're moving and stream guys like, you know, bad guys down or whatever content elements. It's just you walking around in a big box, everything else is streamed down and that absolutely can be done on the current Xbox One hardware. And I believe that's how they might go forward and backwards compat ca compatibility. Not to mention, it would not surprise me if the first couple gen games are going to support both platforms just natively out of the box. So, wow, folks, that was a lot. Um, it was a busy week for me, just a bunch of traveling. Like I said, I was in New York. We've got a bunch of other stuff going on and a bunch of videos hopefully coming out next week, provided I get my microphone today from Amazon. With nothing else, folks, have yourselves a wonderful day and very much thank you to the 10,000 people now. Uh, we passed that milestone. Kind of forgot to do that at the beginning of the show, but we have passed 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Very much appreciated, everybody. As always, have yourselves a wonderful day.